For this video, we are going back to the subreddit, The Truth Is Here. All of these events are true, so just like last time, if you've had similar experiences, feel free to find the links in the description and leave a comment on the original posts. Now, on to these events as reported by their writers. I debated sharing this, since, unfortunately, I have zero remaining evidence. I was told there was no way of saving the video, since the CCTV system only kept recordings of the past 48 hours. Even if it were recoverable, this happened nearly 10 years ago, and the thrift store in question closed this year so it's lost to time, unfortunately. I had actually forgotten all about this for years. When I was 17, I got a job working for a major thrift store chain in a North Seattle location considered by many to be sketchy. The MO of this chain was to buy up old grocery stores or other serviceable old buildings and open up stores. This building was, I believe, one of the old grocery stores of the area. It was tiny and very old. I made a few friends while working there, most of whom I'm still friends with today, and recently this was brought back up. It blows my mind I could have forgotten this, because it's the only actual tangible evidence I've ever seen with my own two eyes of real paranormal activity. So here's what went down. One night, after everybody went home, the security alarm went off. That flagged the security company to send a police car and to inform the building owners, so on and so forth down the chain of command, until it landed at my friend and, at the time, the store supervisor. Since he lived within walking distance of the store, he was responsible for meeting with the patrol and verify that the building was all clear. And it was. With that taken care of, everybody went about their business. The next day, he obviously checked the security footage to see what might have set off the alarm. He actually called me and a few others into the office to show us this footage. Let me describe the layout for you a little, so you can get a better mental image of this first. The front of the store was an entire wall of floor-to-ceiling windows with three doors, an entrance, an exit, and an emergency exit with a big red handle that would trip the alarm if used. The registers stood between that front wall and the racks of clothing, with each crack having a little end cap sign on a little metal post. If you've thrift shopped, I'm sure you know what they look like, as it's pretty much the same in all thrift stores. The back part of the store, employees only area, had a bunch of racks of clothes waiting to be priced that sat there for the next morning. So he shows us the CCTV footage. It's dark and empty and nothing seems to happen for about a minute. Then one of the end cap signs starts to slowly spin. This I could easily write off as a vent draft or something, but things started picking up. The CCTV would pan back and forth between the camera overlooking the front windows, registers, partial view of the racks, and end cap signs to the back of the house area where we processed all donations. In the back, you could see the sleeve of a coat being lifted as though it were pinched at the cuff and lifted above the collar before being dropped again over and over. That could not be explained by a draft. Back to the front camera. The sign is now spinning extremely fast, and the shitty cardboard signs that hang with fishing line from the ceiling are swaying like crazy, almost like an earthquake. And then, the glass windows, they started actually flexing, violently. The red handle on the emergency exit door, a long metal bar almost as long as the actual door at the front thrusted up and down, while the whole door and surrounding windows looked like they were being wailed on by somebody, or several somebodies. This is what set the alarm off. There was nobody there. The parking lot was visible through the glass, and there was not a single person there. All the activity started very slowly and ramped up into a somewhat violent frenzy and then just stopped, all within maybe one to two minute span. So yeah, I have no proof and that is frustrating, and can think of no logical explanation for any of it. I'm absolutely floored I was even able to forget I was shown that video even if it was the better part of a decade ago. This happened back in 2007, in Suero, Texas, the same year the Chupacabra was found there. It was late at night, and I was watching TV, maybe around midnight or 1am. My neighbor to the side of me was gone for the weekend, so their house faced the road that crossed the road in front of me, like a T-shape. So my house faced the street, and their house faced the street that crossed my street. So I had full view into their backyard. 
As I said, they were gone for the weekend, but their dog was still there in the backyard. They had someone coming by to make sure he had food and water. I noticed the motion light came on in their backyard. Sometimes the dog set it off, but since it was so late, usually he was quiet for the night. So I just got up and looked outside my side door. I had French doors off to the side that looked directly into their backyard. And I saw, sitting on their back door steps, three guys, probably in their late 20s or early 30s. One was bald, one had longer brown hair, and I honestly don't remember what the other one looked like. My heart skipped a beat. They were talking about something, but what I found super odd was that I did not see the dog anywhere. But since the motion light was on, I could see them quite clearly. Within about two minutes, they all got up from the steps and started moving towards the backyard fence towards my house. I stood frozen. Their fence was wooden, and on my side, I had a chain link fence next to it. They all three came over that fence without making a sound. Literally, no sound whatsoever and hopped over it like it was nothing. Now at this point, my dog, she's a boxer, and very protective of me and my two kids began a low growl. I went into mama bear mode and grabbed a kitchen knife and headed for the front door. I was freaking out and I knew these guys were up to no good. I opened my front door and I had a very small front yard but it had a street light at the corner right beside the street. I ran out into my front yard and cornered the guy with longer brown hair under the street light. I stood directly in front of him, knife raised, and I said, you need to get off my property. This guy would not look at me in the eyes and kept avoiding me, yet he seemed stuck under that light. I realized that my dog Simon, who would be right next to me any other time, especially in the yard, wasn't by me. So I turned around to see where she was. She was up on my porch and wasn't making a sound, just sitting there. As I turned back around, there was no one there under the light. This guy had vanished, and I never heard a sound. And because it was a streetlight, I thought I would have seen him running off somewhere. But I had just turned around for a second, just to see where Simon was. I have no idea what that was or where the other two disappeared to. I went inside and called the police station. Now, you have to realize Suero is a very small town south of Austin. When I told the lady what had happened, she actually described the three guys to me and said they were familiar with people seeing them, but not being able to catch them trespassing in people's yards. What has always struck me as weird is that they were silent coming over the wooden fence, and that the one that I cornered wouldn't look me in the eyes, and that my dog wouldn't come off the porch. Did I see something strange, or was it just a really quiet group of trespassers? I had an experience happen to me when I was around 12 or 13 that I had forgotten about until it recently came up in conversation with my family. It's about a creature I saw at my grandparents' property. To set the landscape, my grandparents live on an 8-acre plot of rectangular land that is gradually sloping upward the whole way. The top half is entirely woods, with the house sitting just below the tree line giving a pretty good view to the rest of the property below. About 300 yards from the house is an old shed with a creek behind it. The shed sits near a fence, property line, and on the other side is a farm that used to be much bigger, but at the time had four or five cows roaming around. So I was sitting on a swing on my grandparents' porch, alone, just relaxing and looking at the fields below. Off to my left, towards the shed, I noticed this gray-white animal with black spots here and there walking on all four legs. I immediately thought it was one of the cows, as they were known to sometimes cross the fence into the yard. I got up to go tell my grandfather when I looked back to watch where the cow was walking to. It then walked to the shed, raised itself off of its front legs onto only its back legs, and just leaned on the shed. I thought that was odd until it turned its head in my direction. Even with the distance between us, I got immediate chills and this overpowering feeling that I just knew it, somehow, was staring right at me. I turned around and ran into the house, told my grandfather and came back outside. It was no more than one minute from the time I left to when I was back outside, and it was gone, no trace of it, and no cows anywhere near the fence. I told my grandfather what I saw it do and he chuckled, told me that's a nice imagination, and that was the end of it. It terrified me so much at the time that I tried to put it out of my mind, but I still get goosebumps just thinking about it. 
Does this sound familiar to anyone? Or know of any stories, legends about similar sounding creatures? This event took place in Germany in the summer of 2017. I was on holiday with my family, parents, and younger brother, and were due to stay in a small apartment for a few days near Lake Constance. After a long journey from England, we arrived at the destination, a small guest house with a few rooms and a separate apartment complex. As we arrived late, the kitchen had closed and we didn't have any food with us so we had to skip dinner. We then went over to our apartment to unpack and rest for a bit. Nothing seemed off about the apartment at first glance. Everything seemed to be in order and it didn't seem to have any bad vibe at all. I did notice, however, that the cable connecting the TV to the wall had been severed, almost like something had chewed through it. I didn't think too much of it as the TV was quite small and there probably wasn't too much in the way of decent channels. Once we had unpacked, we went to the bar around the corner that was open late for a couple of drinks. My brother and I had left our phones at the apartment so I went back to retrieve them from the safe. This is when things began to get a bit strange. I went over to the safe to get the phones. I had operated the safe before and knew the code and how to open it. This time however, it wouldn't open. I entered the code and pressed the unlock button. I kept repeating this and nothing happened. While doing this, I began to get the feeling that someone was standing behind me. Every time I turned around, no one was there. I was then overcome with this dizziness and an almost electric feeling, as if I was being pumped full of electricity. It occurred for a few seconds, all the while I felt as if I couldn't move and that someone was behind me. The feeling wore off and I looked around to see nothing there. I tried the safe again and it opened. I went back to the bar and told my family what had happened. They were a bit taken aback and didn't know what to make of it. We all returned to the apartment just before midnight and that's when things began to get weirder. There were two bedrooms in this apartment. My brother and I were sharing one room and my parents were in the double bedroom. My brother complained that he felt sick and went to go sleep with my parents. A few minutes later, he was being violently ill in the toilet. My mom was panicking because of the amount of vomit he was retching up. More horrifyingly, the color of this vomit was jet black. He hadn't eaten much that day and he didn't consume anything of that color. He immediately felt better after the ordeal and we all went to bed. Being someone who believes in the supernatural, but also being fairly rational, I tried my best to reassure myself that there was probably a logical explanation for all of this. This was made difficult, however by the events that followed. Despite the window being open, my room felt unnaturally hot. The outside temperature wasn't particularly warm, so I found this somewhat strange. Seeing as I couldn't sleep, I decided to go on my phone for a bit. The Wi-Fi, which had been fine earlier, didn't seem to work. Most of the electrics seemed to work one minute and not the next. Could have been faulty wiring, maybe, but something seemed off to me. I put my phone on charge and sat at the table across the room. The overhead lamp didn't work at first, but after flipping the switch a few times, it eventually turned itself on. I grabbed the pen and paper that was on the table and began writing out football scores. Not something I would usually do, but I was bored and didn't know what else to write. After about 5 minutes of doing this, the light began to flicker. I didn't worry about it too much and carried on writing. What happened next I will never forget. I began to feel overcome by this peculiar energy, an electric feeling similar to what I had experienced early on that night. I was unable to move and couldn't take my eyes off the piece of paper I had been writing on. The electric energy surged through my body and everything around me became blurred out as all my attention was focused onto the paper in front of me. The writing and numbers that I had written on the piece of paper slowly began to turn into a foreign language. The writing was Latin looking and was like nothing I had ever seen before. I believe that it was gothic script, a script that is hundreds of years old and was used in western Europe. It was a surreal experience. I don't know how long the ordeal lasted, but it seemed like an eternity. I was dazed and confused. I didn't know what to do with myself so I went back to bed. After a few hours of sleep, I woke up to the sound of low pitched growling. Thinking I was half asleep, I gave myself a few seconds to adjust. I realized I was fully awake and could still hear the noise. It sounded like it was coming from under the bed. I hid under the covers, trying desperately to control my breathing and not freak out. 
This growling did not sound like that of a dog. It sounded like something unknown, inhuman maybe. I was now starting to realize that there was no real explanation for any of this activity. This place must be haunted by something, possibly dark, and it wanted us out of there. That's when I felt air blowing on my feet, which were exposed, sticking out from under the sheets. I froze, hoping that my mind was playing tricks on me in my paranoid state. I was wrong. Warm, damp air was being blown onto my feet. It was unmistakable. It felt as if a dog was sat at the end of my bed, breathing heavily onto my feet. I curled up into a ball and hid myself under the covers, hoping that it would stop. During the early hours, I heard what sounded like barking coming from right outside my window. The windows were open in my room, and this was a ground floor apartment. Eventually, I plucked up enough courage. I grabbed my phone, put the torch on, and ran to the window to see what was outside. I could still hear the barking and growling as I approached the window. As soon as I looked outside, the noises ceased. It couldn't have been a dog, because not only did it not sound like one, it also stopped as soon as I shone my phone torch outside. It would not have had time to get out of sight as there was nothing to hide behind. Once again, I felt a presence behind me. I span around and shone my torch around the room hoping to catch something, but I couldn't see anything. It was now 4 in the morning and I just wanted to go to sleep. I was scared, but I was also getting irritated. I got back in bed and went off to sleep. When I woke up, it was late morning. Everyone else was awake. I asked them if they had heard any weird noises coming from my room and they said they didn't. My mum, however, heard a growling and barking coming from the back of the apartment, similar to what I had heard. She said she thought it was probably a dog and went back to sleep. She said she also heard music coming from outside the window, a creepy melodic sounding tune being played on a string instrument of some sort. Everyone was growing tired of the place and we all decided it was best to leave and find somewhere else to stay. My brother was still a bit traumatized from his ordeal the night before. He was also alarmed by what I had experienced and didn't want to stay another night. The staff back at the main guest house weren't happy we were leaving and demanded we paid the full price. My dad argued that the place was in a bad state, considering the appliances weren't working properly. He didn't mention the strange activity though. We eventually left that afternoon and found a new place to stay for the remainder of our trip. This place was a bed and breakfast and was much nicer. We were happy just to be away from that other place. Unfortunately, the rest of the trip didn't go to plan. My dad became ill and was in bed with a fever for a couple of days. He said that it was like nothing he'd had before and would have these hallucinations of the previous place we'd stayed at. He also heard creepy voices talking to him. This subsided once the fever disappeared and he made a full recovery almost instantly, which was weird. On the journey home, my mom was also violently sick. Worryingly, this vomit was black, the same color as my brother's. I then began to feel sick on the final part of our journey as we got back to England. Not long after we got back to our house, I had to run to the bathroom and was sick rather violently. This meant that all four of us had now been ill since staying at that apartment. I don't know what type of entity was lurking in that apartment we stayed in, but it sure as hell wasn't friendly. I try and convince myself that it wasn't demonic in nature. However, it's hard to think of what else it could have been or what it could have done if we'd stayed longer. My family is just as creeped out by this as are the other people we have told. The only thing that is certain is that we will never be returning to that place ever again. This happened in Lima, Peru, in the Miraflores district. I live alone in my grandparents' old house and sleep in my grandmother's room, while an aunt and an uncle live in other isolated parts of the house. The house is kind of abandoned, and the family has drifted apart since my grandma died. When I first moved in there three years ago, I'm now 25, and moved in order to be closer to my workplace. I had some scares at night. Sometimes, I felt someone was watching me from the window. The house is inside of a quinta. It's like a group of houses that share a hallway into the street, and my room has a window to this hallway. Even though no one was there, I would feel this while awake, while I read on the bed, or I would wake up suddenly in the middle of the night with the certainty that someone was in the window. On other nights, in the exact moment I was falling asleep, I felt voices and presences around me, and it was scary and uncomfortable. 
As these sensations were common, I brought two amulets people that loved me had given me and placed them on my bed. Then it largely subsided. It could have been my body reacting to a new place, but the change was sudden when I brought the amulets. Fast forward to four months ago, I was trying to shut my mind off and fall asleep with my face to the wall when I felt a presence behind and I felt it extending its hand to touch me. This feeling of movement jolted me to alertness. Then I heard its voice, a feminine but deep and raspy voice saying my name and also saying, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. I got terrified and don't remember how I reacted. I just remember calling my brother and telling him the story and reading with the lights on up until I fell asleep. That same weekend in my parents' house, I go back every Saturday or Sunday to visit and sleep there. A mirror that has been hanging in the first floor bathroom since the house was built broke in the weirdest way. An uncle that lives far away had come to visit and stay in the house, and we got out for breakfast. As we went out, the mirror was whole. I combed my hair in there. When we came back, the mirror was broken inside the shower as if someone had picked it up and threw it in there. It was not possible that it had simply fallen off of its perch, nor that it had slid sideways because of wind, even though the bathroom window was small and was closed. It was not possible because the shower was quite far away from where the mirror was perched. That same day, they called a priest so that he would bless the house and me. I told them my story. We've had weird happenings in the house before and blessings by priests, but nothing as strong as this. I think that someone has cursed me somehow. I think that because the voice knew my name. What do you think? Have you heard something like this before? Recently, some old friends decided to have a mini reunion and invited me. Feeling nostalgic and it sounding like fun, I eagerly came. We had dinner and drinks, were swapping stories, and then one came up about someone I had never heard of in my life. Apparently, this friend, who I'll call Gary, used to sit with us at lunch, hang out with all of us after school, was even the first of us to get a driver's license. I was very confused as I had no recollection. There's about 500 people in our class, and some moved away during high school. I proposed this as a possibility for my lack of memory. Nope. Apparently, he graduated with us. My friends showed me old pictures of us back then, and now I confirmed to myself that I've never met or seen him before in my life. Perplexed, my friends started telling Gary-specific stories, hoping to jog my memory. I remember some events with a few different details, but never with Gary. Finally, one friend calls him up as he lives in another state and couldn't attend. While on speaker, after greetings and bringing him up to speed, he says he remembers me and lists a bunch of details only my friends would have known about me. I play it off as if I suddenly remembered, oh, Gary McKenzie, and we all laugh and hang up shortly after to continue our night. But honestly, I've never known this close friend of ours. Everyone else remembers him very well, everyone but me. If this is a mandala effect, I guess I'm new here. I was coming home from a friend's house about two weeks ago. It was after watching the second episode of the new AHS season. I got a text from my mom saying that the power went out in the house. It wasn't raining or anything, but our neighborhood had lost power previously during a storm a few weeks prior so I had just assumed that it was an overlying issue from that. It was also fairly windy, so maybe a tree branch blew into a power line or something. It could have really been anything. As we drove into the neighborhood, I was looking at other houses and streetlights. All of the power seemed to be on. I was joking with my friends about my luck because I assumed that maybe the power outage was just confined to my street. Pulling up, I saw that my streetlights were still on, and all of my direct neighbors still had power. At this point, I was getting worried simply because I thought that there was an issue with our house. Our house isn't in the best condition, and without getting into too many details, I'm always worried about issues with it due to our financial situation. It was around 12.30 when I walked in, so I was surprised to see that my mom was still awake. The living room was pitch black except for the blue lights on our couch and armchair, their electric recliners so the buttons glow so we can see them in the dark. I thought it was weird that those still had power when nothing else did. I asked her if a breaker was flipped, 
whether or not she had already tried the test and reset buttons on the outlets, and a few other things I found online. She told me that she tried everything and nothing had worked. She then started to show me what worked and what didn't. I thought that the power was out entirely, but it seemed instead like it was just very weak. In the garage, in both bathrooms, none of the outlets worked, but the lights would. When we turned them on, they would flicker. Other than these lights and the buttons on the furniture, it seemed like power was completely gone. My mom called the power company, who told her that they would send someone out to the house to check on the situation. At this point, I was reading a lot online and was convinced that we would have to hire an electrician. I was really worried, but my mom said we'd just deal with it as it happened. I walked into my room to get ready for bed. I had assumed that the power was off here as well since my fan wasn't on. However, I realized that my light switch was just turned off. If my light switch is off, there's no power to anything to my room. I flipped it just in case, and to my surprise, my lights and fan came on immediately. It wasn't like the garage or bathrooms where the lights would just flicker. I actually had full power to my entire room and every outlet. It was really strange since there was no other power in the rest of the house. I just decided that I was lucky, took off my glasses and crawled into bed. I have issues sleeping, so I usually lay on my bed on my phone while it charges. That's what I did this night. I figured my mom had power so I wouldn't have to worry about my phone charge. Around 2 in the morning, I noticed a bright blue glow from my doorway. I usually sleep with the bedroom door open so that my dog can come and go as she pleases. So if the TV is on in the living room, I can see the light in the hallway from my bed. The issue here is that the power was still completely out. The AC units in the living room were still off, and if the power had come back on, our TV wouldn't have turned on anyways unless we did it ourselves. I looked at the door, and I saw that the blue light was coming from a tall figure. It was just standing in the doorway, and my eyes are pretty bad so it was very blurry. I couldn't make out any facial or other distinguishing features. I didn't feel like I was in danger, but I was still pretty wary because I have never had an experience like this. I have heard voices and seen shadow people and all manner of other things, but this was completely new. I stayed very still, and after a few seconds, the figure looked like it was walking away. The light faded as it moved down the hallway, eventually disappearing. As soon as the light had completely disappeared, the power went off in my room. It was very quiet, and I was thinking that maybe it was just my mom with the phone flashlight checking on me. The electric company did say that they would be coming by to check on the house and power lines, so maybe she was still awake. Like I mentioned, my eyesight is very bad, and the blue light could have feasibly come from a phone flashlight. The thing that struck me as odd was that this all happened completely without noise. Usually I can hear her bed when she gets up, and the hardwood creaks when anybody walks in the hallway and living room. I called for her, asking if the power company was here. No response. I wait and call again. Still, nothing. I decide to get out of bed. I put on my glasses and walked into the living room to see if she was out there. She wasn't. It was even darker than before as the lights on the furniture had gone out as well. I walked back to her room and saw her on the bed with the dog, dead asleep. It was obvious that she hadn't been out of bed. I decided not to dwell on it. Like I said, a lot of weird things happened to me that I tried to take in stride. So I messaged my group chat about it and crawled back into bed. I eventually fell asleep. The next morning when I woke up, the power was back on in the entire house. Everything worked fine. I talked to my mom and asked what the issue was. She said that the power company got people out early that morning around 4 or 5. They called her after they left and left a message on her voicemail that simply said they had no idea. By the time they came around, the power had seemed fine, and they saw no issues with our power transformer or power lines in that area. Truthfully, the whole situation was very weird. When I looked it up, all the things I saw on Google were saying that the power situation in the house was something that could happen, but required an experienced electrician to fix, usually from inside the house. How did it just resolve on its own? Why did only our house have power issues at all? And finally, what was the deal with both the glowing blue figure and the fact that the power worked fully in my room when it worked nowhere else? It was all very odd. If anyone has any idea on what this could have been, paranormal or not, I'd love to hear it.